Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. I ask you to please stand this morning and face the very back of the sanctuary as we sing our hymn of invocation, hymn number 380, hymn number 380. continue on the top of page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this here confession, I, by the virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the, excuse me, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the introit printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. 
and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the Nativity of our Lord is from Exodus chapter 40. In the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. Moses erected the tabernacle. He laid its bases and set up its frames. 
and put in its poles and raised up its pillars. And he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent over it. As the Lord had commanded Moses, he took the testimony and put it into the ark and put the poles on the ark and set the mercy seat above on the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set it and set up the veil of the screen and screened the ark of the testimony as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle and Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud settled on it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle throughout all their journeys. Whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and fire was in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistles from Titus chapter 3. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of, the, of eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. With one heart and one voice, we confess our holy faith as expressed in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 191. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, 
and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn number 387, hymn number 387. In the name of Jesus, amen. A question for you to consider this morning, and that question is this, is Jesus the first and greatest being created by God? One more time, listen carefully. Is Jesus the first and greatest being created by God? This last year, in 2020, a group from an organization called Ligonier Ministries interviewed thousands of Christians to take the theological temperature of Christianity in America. The survey had about 35 questions. One of these questions was the one that was just asked to you. So when asked the question, is Jesus the first and greatest being created by God, some 65%, mark this, 65% of evangelical Christians answered by saying yes, we agree. Let that sink in for a moment. 
65%. Two out of three Baptists, Pentecostals, Nazarenes, and so forth affirm that Jesus is the first and greatest, yes, the first and greatest being created by God. Now, just in case you did not pick up on what the question was asking and how this is a tremendous and horrific, tragic problem in American Christianity, let me repeat it to you in a very straightforward way. Is Jesus a created being? Is Christ created? Now, dear friends, it is so very important for us to recognize that when Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, that he was not created for the first time, as if he somehow did not exist before the conception and his birth. But instead, we believe and we teach and we confess boldly that Jesus is eternal. We confess that he is God of God, light of light, very God of very God. We confess that he is of one substance with the Father. And so he was not made. He was not made when he was conceived and born. But rather, when Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he became a man, flesh and blood. Keep in mind, though, when Jesus became man, flesh and blood, like you and me, he did not lose his divinity. Jesus' birth was not like a, an exchange, maybe perhaps giving and cashing in some divinity for some humanity, like a quick exchange at a pawn shop. When Jesus was born, he did not lose his power like Superman did in the 1980s Superman II movie. Jesus did not become like a powerless Clark Kent, Clark Kent losing his power. No, from his birth to Jesus' death, to his resurrection, and to right now, right now, in this very moment, Jesus is fully man and fully God at the same time. So what this means is that 65% of American evangelicals are missing one of the most fundamental, one of the most important doctrines of the entire Christian faith. They believe Jesus to be a created being. And by believing this, they have inadvertently stripped Jesus of his divinity. They've denied him as God in the flesh. This is one of the main reasons why we confess that Nicene Creed several times a month in our Sunday services alongside the Apostles' Creed. The Nicene Creed, which we just confessed here this morning, is one that communicates and teaches us that Jesus is not just a mere man. The creed teaches us and condemns any kind of heresy that would demote Jesus to just a mere created being. In fact, when that Nicene Creed was written some 1,700 years ago, it was written to push back against this kind of heresy that makes Jesus into just a mere created being. But why is this so important? Why address it this morning? Isn't this kind of talk about theology maybe perhaps splitting hairs? I can remember about 15 years ago, Serenity and I moved from Southern California, where we were serving, a, where I was serving a church in Southern California, to Williston, North Dakota. The second day we were in our new house, we received a knock at the door. At the door were two ladies. At first, I thought they were new neighbors, perhaps bringing over some warm apple pie. However, as I opened the door, they quickly asked me the question, are you ready for the end of the world? It was a weird question, to say the least, especially since I considered them to be new neighbors. No apple pie, but asking me if I was ready for the end of the world. But as I quickly realized, they were not my neighbors. And so after I gained my composure, I said, Yes, I am. I am ready for the end of the world. Now, I remind you, I had basketball shorts on, uh, flip-flop sandals, and a backwards hat on at the time. They then gave me a pamphlet and explained several key points to me that I needed to read to be ready for the end of the world. As they were sharing, it became evidently clear to me that they were Jehovah's Witnesses. 
Well, as they were about ready to leave, they said to me, do you have any questions for us? And I sure did. I said to them, yes, I do have a question for you. Who is Jesus? Looking a bit flustered, they answered, God's son. Obviously, God's son. I then said, so he is a man. They said, yes, a man. He is indeed a man. He is God's son. I followed up by asking a second question. And he's also God, right? Obviously, he's God, right? To this question, they got obviously flustered, kind of shuffled in their shoes. So knowing their theology, that they believe Jesus is the greatest created being of God and not God, I said this to them. You know, in in, in Mark's gospel, Jesus forgives sin and the religious leaders, they get really upset. They lose it. Because in the Old Testament, Isaiah says that only God can forgive sins. So how can Jesus forgive sin if he isn't God? I can remember like yesterday, the older lady tilted her head and said with a little bit of sass, Oh my young man, you read your Bible, don't you? Now, dear friends, if Jesus is just a mere man, if Jesus is just a created being like those Jehovah Witness ladies believed, you see, if he's just a created mere being, we might as well just stop the service right here. If that is all that Jesus is, is a created being, we should just stop right now, go home, and stop wasting our time. In fact, if Jesus is just a mere man, a created being, we would be better off selling this church building, getting some cash, and then going on a fancy cruise together. That would be much more rational than what we're doing right now if Jesus was just a mere created being. If Jesus is just a created being, everything we're doing here is meaningless. It is foolish, foolish at best. Hear this loud and clear. A mere mortal man, a created being, does nothing for you and nothing for me. Absolutely nothing. If Jesus is just a created being, we are sunk We are damned in our sins alone. We don't stand a chance against sin, death, and the devil by ourselves or with another created being in our corner or at our side. If Jesus Jesus is just a created being, he definitely would not stand a chance against sin and certainly not death. And with the devil, well, it would be a toss-up, 50-50 cage match fight. Who would win between the two of them? But hear this today. Baptized saints, hear this today. Hear this loud and clear. Contrary to what 65% of American evangelicals believe, and contrary to what those two sassy ladies believed, the baby Jesus in the manger was no ordinary created being. He was no ordinary created babe. But instead, the babe in the manger, that one in the manger, was the one by which all the heavens and the earth were created. Get this, not one thing, Scripture says, not one thing came into existence without Christ. The earth, the moon, the stars, the universe, they were created through Jesus and for Jesus. So, we are not sunk. We're not alone. We're not left damned in our sins. Dear friends, do not be misled into foolish ideas and silly myths and biblical ignorance. Christ is indeed fully man, but he is also fully God. We see his divinity from his miracles, the testimony of scripture, and his resurrection from the dead, from the grave. And so it is necessary for him to be true man and true God so that he might be a sufficient ransom for you and me before the law. It is necessary for him to be true man and God so that he might be able to overcome sin and death and the devil for you and me by his holy life and sacrificial death on our behalf. He is the God who was born for you and me. He is the God who suffers He's the God who bleeds for you and for me. Indeed, he's the God who bleeds for you and me.
He's the God who was raised from the dead and reigns bodily today and forevermore for you and me. He is the God-man, not some created being. He is your Jesus who came to purchase you, not with gold or silver, but with his holy and his precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. He's the God-man that came to conquer sin, to conquer death, to chase death away, and to smite the devil for you so that you may be Jesus' own. He did this all for you, not as a mere created being, but as full God and full man. He did this and considered it well worthwhile. Merry Christmas, blessed baptized saints. Merry Christmas to you indeed. Merry Christmas in the name of the God-man, Jesus Christ, who has done all for us. Amen. I ask you to please stand as we sing the offertory together. Congregation may be saved for the offering. As a way of reminder, the offering plate is at the very back of the sanctuary. Offerings can also be conducted online through the church website or mailed into the church office as well.
Ask congregation to please stand for the prayers of the church. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. Let us offer praise, thanks, and prayer to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For all who celebrate the incarnation, that the knowledge that their God reign reigns would cause them to lift up their voices and sing for joy, and that they would always be ready to tell others about the word made flesh. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the nations of this world, that they would be given a spirit of peace, so that conflicts cease and all see the birth of Jesus, the salvation of our God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. <clears throat> for those who suffer persecution for the sake of Christ, that they would be kept firm in their faith as they bear witness to the light of the world, and that they would never lose sight of their identity as children of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the destitute, those recovering from natural disaster, and those who find themselves in want, that they would receive the necessities for daily life, that the agencies who serve them would receive generous support, and that those who serve and those who are served would come to see God as their giver of daily bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who suffer sickness in mind or body, those who are homebound, and all who, are, and all who have asked for our prayers, that God would grant them healing, peace, patience, and faith that endures. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord, for the sake of your Son, the Word become flesh, the Savior of the nations, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God. Amen. As we continue to the service of the sacrament on page 194, we continue in repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. If you're not a member of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Center, one of our sister congregations, we do still invite you to please come forward, kneel, and cross your arms at the rail to receive a blessing this morning. And if you'd like to partake of this wonderful gift of the altar, please talk to me after the service at, about membership here at St. Paul's. As a way of reminder, too, we ask that you please space at the rail as you receive God's gifts this morning. We continue on 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Up our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
ask the congregation to please stand for the Nunc Dimittis Psalm, page 199. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this solitary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Maybe see it for departing him, hymn number 374, hymn number 374. Please stand. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. You may be seated. The ushers will dismiss you this morning. God bless.